What's going on guys? In this video we're going to go over a witch doctor build that is a little bit unconventional for a lot of the normal means. Now we're going to have this set up as a ZDPS witch doctor which stands for zero DPS if you're not familiar with that term. Now this is going to revolve around one piece of gear for the most part. The Ticklandian Visage, and you're going to see in the secondary there, Horrify causes you to fear and root enemies around you for 6 seconds. Now I can roll up to 8, and this is just an absolutely incredible item. Now, the Monk is your prototypical tank for a lot of your higher greater rifts because a lot of the stuff they can do. But this is going to give you another option to either run with this uh, in a group or maybe in conjunction with them. And we'll go over how that can work for you. And we're going to cover the skills. We're going to cover a couple pieces of gear that are going to be important. And then I'm going to show you guys some gameplay to just show you how incredible this is. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. It's almost unbelievable. Stick around. I'll show you this in action so you can see just how fun this is and how well it can work for you. Now, the skills, Piranhas with Piranado. Plague of Toads with Reign of Toads, Horrify with Face of Death, Fetish Army. Now, if you have an SMK, a Star Metal, run with Tiki Tortures, else run with Legion of Daggers, Spirit Walk with Healing Journey, Summon Zombie Dogs with Leeching Beast, and for your passives, Grave Injustice, Jungle Fortitude, however, this is optional, Spirit Vessel, and a Finished Sycophants. Now, Piranhas with Pyranado, this is very important. Um, as you know, it has kind of a grab effect from things around it. It can even grab yellows uh, so long as you place it correctly. And that's very important because the radius of your Horrify is fairly large. However, if you're fighting two, gr two groups of elites or maybe some that have uh, minions, uh, it's really good to try and group those things up as best you can so that you can go ahead and keep them horrified and uh, in place and keep them tanked. Plague of Toads with Reign of Toads for the simple fact that you're running Fetish Sycophants, you're going to do some damage with this build. Now, you can certainly go another direction if you don't want to. Uh, if you're going true ZDPS, which there's an alternate build that you can run with this helm and still do damage, especially with that SMK involved, uh, which is kind of what we have set up now. We just don't have that star metal. So uh, we're going with that at the moment. Horrify with Face of Death. Now, this is the important part. It increases the radius of Horrify to 24 yards. That's a huge radius. And I'm going to show you guys. Like I said, stick around for some gameplay. Uh, and we're really just going to do that briefly because we're not going to do a bunch of damage. But I want to show you guys how, how this works. Um, that is the number one skill you're going to spam and keep everything on lockdown. It's incredible. Fetish Army with Legion of Daggers. Like I said, if you have that star metal, go ahead and go with Tiki Torches or Torchers so that you know you're, um, these guys are going to hit a, a few more enemies, be able to get your cooldown uh, around a little bit quicker. Spirit Walk with Healing Journey. Uh, this, because it heals you. Um, I was running this in some higher, greater rifts uh, in some groups that we were doing. Uh, this is a good way to get in and around ahead of your, you know, your group. That way you're the one getting in there to take the damage. Um, you know, you can go with any number of other skills here. I did find that this is good uh, in case there is a larger mob or two sets of elites that you got to get through some areas to be able to fear them. It's very important to, to have crowd control. You're the main focal point to keep things in line. Now, back to that last point. Sometimes you're going to be in there. Now, when you have stuff horrified, you're not going to be taking damage hardly at all, if at all. However, there's going to be times where it does happen, and we're going to go over that, and there, there's a couple tips I want to go over here in just one second, and we'll go over that. But zombie, dog, zombie dogs with leeching beast, uh, this is good just to get that extra health back. Um, passives, grave injustice, very important there. Reduce the cooldown of all of your skills by one second when an enemy dies within 20 yards, and that range is increased by your gold pickup radius uh, if you have any on your gear in the secondaries. Um, this is very important to get the Horrify around quicker, to get your Fetish Army back without the Zunamasa set, to get your Spirit Walk back a little bit quicker, to get your Piranhas back quicker for more crowd control. It, it's a no-brainer to run with this. Now, you can run with Pierce the Veil, and there's nothing wrong with that. I tend to run with that most of the time. If you're in really high greater rifts, you might want to run with Jungle Fortitude if you do find that, hey, you know, sometimes I am taking damage and I need to go in there and make sure I don't die. Um... Spirit Vessel, again, you're going to die at some point in higher, greater rifts, just to RNG. 
If it's a matter of we're going to push the limit, push the envelope, I'm running with a great group, then you might want to go something other than Spirit Vessel, something that's going to help you out offensively. But this is kind of like a safety measure in case something bad does happen. But this reduces the cooldown of Horrify if you don't have much cooldown reduction. And it's also going to reduce your Spirit Walk. So that's it's a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, this is on a 12 second cooldown. With that on there, it's a 10 second cooldown. Uh, because the one that we have has rolled 6, all we need is about 50% cooldown reduction, although we do have higher than that. Um, plus we have Grave Injustice, but in case you're fighting one enemy, that's a very good thing to have there. Fetish Sick Advance, because you're going to have a chance to summon uh, the Fetish there to fight by your side. And uh, you're going to be attacking with Plague of Toads pretty much the most of the time you're in there. Now, a couple tips uh, that I, I really need to go over. Fetish Army and Fetish Sycophants, if you're in higher, greater rifts, Reflect Damage absolutely annihilates these pet doctors. And it's really important that if you do get in there, you'll find out the hard way that sometimes, you know, you can't hit that Spirit Walk quick enough and you're going to die. Um, sometimes you go in there, it's best just to, you know, don't keep your Fetish Army around, don't keep your Fetish Sycophants around. If you're fighting Reflect, uh, just something to keep in mind when you're in there. And with the piranhas, again, you're able to grab stuff, move it around, and we'll show you that here real quick uh, once we go over the gear. Again, star metal. If you got it, use it. If you've got a Doombringer with some cooldown reduction on it, you can still get your physical damage for your pets in there. Uh, not, not a bad way to go there, and sometimes I do equip this. Uh, Royal Ring of Grandeur, very important because we're going to go over, like I said, the main piece of gear is this Ticklandian Visage. And, I mean, this is just unbelievable, and we'll show you here in one second. The rest of the gear you can pretty much craft to get away with. We've got Captain Crimson's, uh, you know, we've got this so that you can uh, get defensive setup. You've got the uh, life regen, you got cooldown reduction, you got the extra resistances. Uh, that's good. Ashira's, we went with this. You can certainly go with any number. Uh, you can keep your Tasker and Theo's on if you don't mind uh, not having the three-piece bonus there, which is 20% life plus 100 uh, resistance all elements. You can certainly go any different direction there. If you want to do a little bit more damage, perhaps you go uh, maybe with some Blackthorns uh, in different places to get rid of some of the cooldown reduction you don't need. Tasker and Theo, maybe some Depth Diggers since you're in there using Reign of Toads most of the time. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, for bracers, we still do have the strong arm bracers because we want to do that extra damage when we group things up. You can go with something more defensive there if you want. Now, if you have the uh, shield that freezes, it's a certainly it's certainly a good option to go with, and, and it's perfectly viable. You go in there, you get hit, and it has a chance for uh, things to, to freeze when they hit you. It's very important to keep that around. If you don't have that, the ivory tower is not a bad uh, go here. Any shield, uh, the, the block chance on this is pretty terrible. But we just stole this from a character, threw it on, and the secondary there reduces damage from melee attacks by 29.4%. That's the main reason we're using that. Now, if you have a Zephyrian amulet, this is really good because, now this is the biggest point I want to make. And if you're on the fence about, oh, wow, well, why would I want to run, you know, ZDPS Witch Doctor, and why do I want to tank with it? The absolute number one best thing about Horrify is when you're fighting elites, it, we're going to call out Bandit here, the Laser Spinners, the Arcane Sentries, um, all the Jailer, the, the Molten, the Plague, you know, all of that stuff. Absolutely none of it can be cast so long as you have them Horrified. You can keep elites on permanent lockdown and have your DPS in your group just absolutely go to town. Now the only two affixes that can hurt you, and I believe it's just the two, lightning, when you hit stuff, and, and thank God they've nerfed that, but if you're in there and you're, you're the center of the attention, you're the radius, uh, you're, the, you're the focal point of Horrify, this is a great amulet to have to be able to ignore all of that lightning damage that comes through. And as I mentioned before, reflect damage. Reflect damage, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Those are the two that are going to affect you the most. Now, if you walk up on something, it will finish its cast. If it's already cast of the Arcane Sentry, any of those things, it'll go until its duration is up, so long as you have it horrified after that. They won't cast it again. It's absolutely incredible, and I'll show you this in action. So that's the uh, gear, guys. You can certainly go with any number of direction, however you see fit. If you want to set up defense, if you want to set up offense, as soon as we get a star medal, we're going to do another build sh to show you guys this in action. Uh, but the main item that is absolutely necessary is the Ticklandian Visage. If you don't have any other gear, just run in and see what it's like. 
Um, with the gear set up, we have 60.45 cooldown reduction, which is far more than enough. However, we're just running this on here for the three-piece bonuses uh, that we're getting, and you can certainly go any number of direction you want to get more damage, and I wouldn't blame you one bit. For your Paragon points, movement speed, and then we've got the rest into intelligence. Uh, cooldown reduction, we do some into attack speed to, to test out a few things. You can certainly go with crit hit damage, crit hit chance there. Not a bad way to go, but definitely get your cooldown reduction up. Since you're probably going to have high intelligence as a witch doctor, go with armor first, then resist all. And like I've been doing with a lot of my builds lately, I go with life regeneration first before life percentage. Uh, I do find this to be far more effective when I'm in there and I need that extra life. For your utility, life on hit, absolutely the first choice. Area damage and then gold fine because what the hell, you're not going to be using resources so why not get a little bit extra gold while you're going around. Now if you're in greater rifts, you're obviously not going to get that. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to go over this with you guys. Now stick around, I'm going to show you this in action. Like I said, those couple tips that you picked up on throughout there, you know, it's very important. You'll learn the small things as you go through. Get this helmet, run around, don't even, I mean you can run around naked and we're going to show you that in action. So stick around and we'll see that we'll see how this works. All right, so we're going to go into I want to go into a wide open space. So we're going to go ahead and go over here to the fields of misery and I'm going to show you this in action. I'm not going to call uh, you know I'll call the the dogs there in case I need to heal a little bit. But you're going to see I'm going to cast horrify and you can cast it at any point. And technically there is that would stay there as the animation. As soon as those guys come up, you are going to see they're feared. And I can run around I can cast this and I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to just keep casting this. Everything you see is getting feared. There's absolutely, they're doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, if you're not in range, they will continue and finish their attack. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind if you're wondering, like, wait a minute, Jay Hal. That stuff still came through. They're still attacking. Like right there. They still were able to attack. But the minute I run past them, they get feared. And this is absolutely incredible to the extent that nothing is going to hurt me and I'm not worried about it at all not a single thing if you're farming act one caches and you've got some damage you can run through here and just I wish I had some elite so we can show you guys this thing how it works um, but none want to go the only thing this doesn't work on is rift bosses and I think that would be a little bit OP uh, if they did allow it to work on rift bosses so I can certainly imagine why it doesn't uh, I don't know if this is something that they'll plan on nerfing uh, going forward but uh I'm enjoying it until then. I mean, I'm running around this entire map and I have not a single worry. Now, here we go. This guy. You know what? I don't like this guy. I've died to his jailing so many times. And there, that's why I said with the piranhas, um, you know, you can move stuff around. We'll pull in all kinds of stuff. Now, those things on the far outside, you're seeing this entire radius here is just how far this thing pulls in. Now, I can kind of move up and position myself and... Um, yeah, there we go. So I'm positioning myself. We've got almost the entire screen on lockdown. That guy, the big tree just walked up. Uh, we've got some stuff down here. We're going to go ahead and pull it a little bit closer. The key warden is frozen. You know, we have a couple things on the outskirts, but as you can see, we have the entire map locked. I mean, I'm not worrying about a thing. This guy, you know, depending on your gear and where you're at, might kick your ass a little bit, and uh, that's just part of it. With this Ticklandian visage, I mean, I could run around through this entire map with nothing but a helmet on, mostly, and I could be just fine. We have a few, you know, fetish sycophants that are in there, our zombie dogs, and of course our follower. That's the only way stuff's dying, but absolutely nothing I'm worried about. Now, we'll go ahead and we'll call our pets in. We'll go ahead and get our fetish sycophants up, and this is how you can do it. You can sit here and you can just continue to cast while you're in there. Go ahead and hit that horrify when it's on cooldown. And you don't have a thing to worry about. We've got our fetish sick of fans up. We've got our fetish army up. Uh, we've killed enough things because we have high enough cooldown reduction that our fetish army is already back and we can cast that again. And um, this is it, guys. I mean, you're going to see, like I said, this isn't a very strong build that I have set up here. You can certainly put the proper gear together, uh, especially with that star metal. Get this guy down very quickly. But uh, this is it, guys. Hopefully this part explains everything and the reason for why we are using this build. Um, if you're running greater rifts with friends, I promise you this is absolutely, you will be everybody's best friend with this build. Now, for example, if we had two groups, we've got, and that's what happens when you go out of range. He's able to jail, he's able to do all those things that we didn't let him do for probably a solid minute. So that's it, guys. 
hopefully this is something that you now have considered and want to run with. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know uh, what you think of the build or let me know uh, something you might be running different uh, with your current build. I'm definitely always interested to hear those. Or if you don't have anything to say in the comments, feel free to hit that like button and let me know what you think that way. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to subscribe. We've got a lot more videos coming around and uh, those are going to be coming very, very soon. So feel free to check those out and um, stick around for any other future videos. But thanks for watching, guys. As always, and like me on that star metal, happy hunting. We'll see you next time.